Welcome good people, uh, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to calculate degrees of freedom in your structural equation model. Now I know many of you are thinking like why do I even need to know how to calculate degrees of freedom? The software program gives that to me, uh, I can run the model and it'll, it'll spit it all out. So why do I need to know how to calculate it? Well oftentimes when you are reviewing other people's work, uh, you may see some inconsistencies sometimes there. And looking at their model and looking at their results they're presenting, maybe it kind of cues you into, like, hey, something's off right here. Like, your model and your degrees of freedom are not kind of matching up. But I can see that it looks like it, it's off, but how do I actually go back and kind of calculate your degrees of freedom to see if there's something wrong? Like, if you're missing parameter estimates, or maybe you had more, you know, correlated errors than you actually said you did, and... Uh, and so some of it is just going back and trying to figure out, can I go back and calculate those degrees of freedom to see if the model is accurate and the results as you're reporting are accurate as well. The one thing that you <coughs> have to uh, be mindful of when you're calculating kind of degrees of freedom too is it's kind of a long formula, but it's not a complicated formula. So it looks, you know, when you see a formula that's m times m plus 1 divided by 2 minus 2 times m minus x times x minus 1 divided by 2, and no, many of you are going to be like, I'm out. That's just ridiculous. I'm not going to go calculate that. It's not that, it's not that complicated. Uh, so I'm going to break it down into its pieces and just kind of what each of those kind of pieces in the formula mean, and then we'll give you an example to kind of show you it's not that bad. So let's look at the, the pieces of the formula. So the first thing we have to kind of sh uh, assess is what do those m's and x's represent then? Uh, well, the m's in this formula represent indicators or uh, observables uh, that's in your model. And the x uh, represents the number of independent latent constructs. So you really need to cue in on that keyword there is the independent latent constructs, not all of your latent constructs, just the independent ones. So from this, if we wanted to look at just kind of the pieces of this formula, like what do they represent? The first part of the formula, the m times m plus 1 divided by 2, this is going to give us the maximum degrees of freedom in the model. It's the max amount that, that, they, that it possibly has. Uh, the next part of the formula, the 2 times m, is going to give us the number of parameters to be estimated. Again, the m is our observables that are in the model. The last part of it, the x times x minus 1 divided by 2, this represents the free off-diagonal covariances of the constructs. Again, these are the independent constructs uh, in your model. So if we had just kind of a simple uh, measurement model here, um, and I've got two latent constructs, and each of those were measured by uh, three observables. So that means our m in this instance would be six. We have six total observables. and the uh, x in this is two latent constructs. In measurement models, just to kind of note this as well, if you're talking about like a CFA or those other kind of measurement models that you're going to run, all latent constructs are treated as independents. Right? They don't have any relationships that are going between constructs in measurement models. And so all measurement, uh, all latent constructs in a measurement model are considered independents. So that's why we have two uh, latent constructs that are, that are both independent in this measurement model. So let's kind of put it into our formula and just kind of see uh, what it gives us then. So the first half, that m times m plus 1 divided by 2, remember we had six observables, so, uh, so that gives us a max degrees of freedom of 21, and then 2 times m, so 2 times 6, and this is our number of parameters to be estimated, and then our back end is those kind of free off diagonal uh, aspects of the covariance matrix of our independent constructs, that x times x minus 1 divided by 2, uh, and that gives us a 1. So you take our 21 minus 12 minus 1, that gives us 8 degrees of freedom for our measurement model that's out there. So kind of a little bit of a complicated formula it looks like, but in reality when you kind of plug everything in, it's not so bad. Well that was a measurement model. Does the formula change when you've got a structural model? So I have to account for relationships between constructs. Not all of them are going to be independents in a structural model. Yes, it changes slightly, but not much, though. 
So when you're calculating degrees of freedom in a structural model, the front half of the, the formula is going to be exactly the same. Except on the back half, now we're going to subtract what's called gamma relationships and beta relationships. The G, or the gamma relationships in this formula, are structural relationships from independent constructs to dependent constructs. And then the betas are structural relationships from dependent constructs to dependent constructs. And we're going to kind of subtract those from the back end of that, um, uh, that formula. So let's go back and use a, another example here. So I've got an example where I've got... Um, four constructs all of them were measured with three observables there's two independent constructs uh, in this formula it's social anxiety and shyness uh, and they have a relationship to loneliness and then loneliness has a relationship to depression so in this model we have two gamma relationships two independent to dependent relationships uh, our social anxiety and shyness to loneliness. And then we have one dependent to dependent relationship or a beta relationship, which is loneliness to depression. We have, from a formula perspective, our M, we have 12 indicators in here. So there's four constructs, three measures each, that's 12. And then we have two independent latent constructs. Again, we're not considering all the constructs, independent and dependent, just the independent ones. So let's kind of plug this into our formula then. Uh, so if we kind of put this into our formula, uh, the front half is going to look very similar as, as b before. Nothing much is going to change. We're going to do the m times m plus 1 divided by 2. Remember we had 12 observables, so that gives us our kind of our max degrees of freedom. 2 times m, uh, again, m was still 12. And then we get the free off diagonal, which was one, except now we're going to subtract our gamma relationships, which we had two of those, and we're going to subtract a beta relationship, which we had one of those. And now we have, we can see our degrees of freedom are 50. Uh, there's 50 degrees of freedom in that model. So just kind of a quick way to actually figure out, like, how do I calculate the degrees of freedom to, to assess? Is this degrees of freedom that you're saying is in this model, is this accurate based on what the model is telling us? Um, if you're looking for more information on how to calculate degrees of freedom or specifically on how to run SIM models from even very kind of basic aspects of SIM to even more really advanced uh, aspects of structural equation modeling, I encourage you to kind of check out my book, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, and as always, if you saw value in the videos, oh, I'd ask that you like and subscribe uh, for more videos to come. I hope you'll have a great week. Good people.